Hello everybody and welcome back to Evil Ted Live, which I do on my Twitch stream, which is twitch.tv slash Evil Ted Smith. In today's episode, uh, I did a little bit of social media, put some pictures out uh, of all the projects I've collected over the years and asked people what you would like me to start on first. And you're probably saying, hey Ted, I didn't see that in social media. I also do it on my email. If you guys are not on my email list, definitely go to my website, evildtedsmith.com and get on my mailing list. I had a lot of projects, but uh, the one that got the most votes to start with first is the Alien Chestburster. Um, this is a vinyl kit I got a while back. Um, I always want to put this together and it's been procrastinating forever. So I thought this would be great to do this on my live stream. And I'm going to do some modification because the it's a vinyl kit and it came with a really, really long tail. And the tail was just straight, and I want to bring it some kind of a sense of movement to it. So we're going to uh, not only paint this and put this together, we're also going to fabricate a tail on this. So if you guys are ready, let's get started. There is this is a vinyl kit. Now again, I have links for the kit below, and you'll notice the tail on the kit. Like I said, it was super long, and it's just kind of like a flat, lifeless-looking tail. So the first thing we're going to do, as the tail, as cool as it looks, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, I want to be able to have the tail like sit like have this thing sit upright and have the tail kind of curl around the body So of course we're gonna make that tail out of what? EVA foam So I'm gonna get my exacto blade and Cut this because I want the tail to start to curve Like from here and start to wrap around so I'm gonna go ahead and just instead of using this tail and wrap it I'm gonna cut this part off so I made a pencil mark for that it's going to come into the exacto blade. Perfect. Now, all right, again, with this tail, I went and laid it down on a piece of poster board, traced it out, and kind of plot out how long the tail is going to be. And again, you can see I made the notches for the ridges. Uh, I looked at this tail, and it has a flat base here and a ridge on top. Now, you could probably just cut a thick piece of foam and cut the groove into it. Sorry there, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do it in two pieces. I'm going to cut a uh, 10 millimeter sheet of foam and then another strip on top to create this look. I went ahead and got 10 millimeter foam. We're going to place my pattern on top of this. Now we have it pinned down. We're going to get uh, a silver sharpie from uh, TNT Cosplay Supply. Now this is... That's the bottom half of the tail, but for the ridge, the top, I have this. Uh, it's another pattern piece, so we're gonna go ahead and trace this as well. Now, go, when I cut this out, I'm going to uh, take the, the blade, I'm gonna cut on the inside of the Sharpie line. All right, like that. Yeah, now the next step what we're going to do is we're going to round off these edges, but I realize if we do that, we're going to lose the uh, the markings that we have right here. So I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, my silver Sharpie. I'm going to wrap these guys down a little bit because I just want to make sure that when I go to grind, I'll have something to see. So Now with my rotary tool and sand these edges. Before I do all this grinding, I actually have a uh, downdraft table. This is gonna make a lot of dust, so I figured since I have a downdraft table over here, we should use it. So let's move the camera and we'll go over there. There it is, this is the base. Got it rounded and now the top of the tail. Now the plan is, take this guy. It's going to fit on the back of this. I can tell right now that this probably needs to be tailored a little bit more to fit in there, but this is pretty darn close. So we're going to live at that. A little inspector. I think this is good. So the next step would be to go ahead and glue these guys together. There's the bottom of the tail, kind of adhesive is dry. We're going to line this up from the front, dead centered. Ta da! Great. Again, <clears throat> so you get the shape of the tail. Looking good. Uh, my plan now is to cut a slit in the back of it. Alright, there it is. Now, 
I'm going to stuff the wire in here. There we go. That's a ticket. Now the trick is I want to go ahead and stuff the wire in first. And then we'll put the glue on top of that. I have some uh, foam scraps. We're going to slather some glue in there. Ladle it in there. Let's pinch it close. See, look at that. Perfect. You got the little registration marks, which come in handy. Now, with that armature wire in there, it allows us to bend and shape it. But we're not going to do that yet because I want to do some uh, wood burning. So, there's going to be some additional grinding and sculpting on this, but I want to make sure I get the wood up, uh, to get the wood burner out, and do the uh, the, uh, the grooves. All right. Now to make sure this is hot enough, I have a piece of scrap foam. Like so. Hold it here. Okay, that'll do it. I took the wood burner, put all the lines into it. Uh, I like it, but it's kind of straight. In the original alien figure, there's a bit of a recess back inside here. And what I want to do is um, I'm going to take the rotary tool and my sanding drum. I'm just going to come up behind each line and kind of knock it down just a little bit to kind of get a little bit of a kind of a gradual step into it. Kind of create a little bit more mechanical. Sorry, make it more organic and less mechanical looking. So let me get my mask on. And again, these are great masks. You guys have not got one of these. I have a link for this below. What's so great about these masks is that when you wear it, they're so comfortable you forget you have them on. Alright, I'm taking a little bit of a break. I'm realizing that uh, this guy with the sharp edge at the top, focus, there it is. It's uh, really sharp. It's got to be careful because it leaves a hard line. Where I have the same bit with a rounded edge to it. So I'm going to swap these guys out. Again, the torch is not for everybody. <laughs> just, uh, the reason I used, these, used to use the torch a lot in the prop house is because it was just quick. Working in the movie industry, it's all about speed. When putting the vinyl kit together, there's a lot of gaps. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it really quickly. They're not that, they're very small holes. I can just patch it very easily. So I'm going to use, I got Magic Sculpt. Magic Sculpt is a, um, a two-part putty. It's like a, it's a resin, basically. You got an A and B and you mix it together. And uh, I'll make a small ball. I'm just going to stuff this. And you can thin it and shape it with water. It is like, when it cures, it's like bulletproof. It's super hard. So I'm going to take a bit of this and mix it together to patch these holes. I like to use rubber gloves when I'm doing this. All right, there you go. Make sure they're about the same size. Now we're going to knead these two together, and that's part of your mixing. So what I'm going to do is I uh, tear a little chunk out this nice and properly evenly mixed. I'm going to, uh, the, where there's a big gap right here. That's it. The cool thing with this stuff is you can actually smooth it out with water. It's, a little, it's kind of a little tacky right now, but I got some uh, a cup of water here. I think of this wet a little bit, and I'll take the roughness out of it. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this stuff dry. This won't take too long. I mean, to get it's complete dry, I think it takes a couple hours for it to dry, but it's will dry enough to where I can still handle it. Um, uh, I'm gonna do the Bondo stuff off camera because uh, cracking a can of Bondo in my shop just permeates and smells the entire place up. So uh, I'll be doing this off camera. I'll fold this up with Bondo, let it cure, and then we'll come back and... Okay, as you can see, the tail is, has been secured. What I end up doing is end up using the uh, auto body uh, Bondo, um, <laughs> auto body uh, Bondo filler. I just mixed up a batch, squished it in there, 
and just shoved the tail into it uh, and, and propped it upright and let it cured. And it kicked off really well. And the bondo kicked off. I took an exacto blade, cleaned this stuff off while it was still green and soft. Now that it's glued on there, you, uh, you can see it's pretty well adhered. But again, bondo is a filler. It's not an adhesion, so it's not going to hold very well. I think this light is a bit hot. Hold on, guys. Turn this off. There, that helps. Um, this is uh, stuck in here, but it still kind of wiggles around a little bit because it's loose. So I'm going to take some uh, Zappagap and run a little bit of bead of uh, Zappagap around the edge of the uh, where the foam meets the, the Bondo. So I have a nice adhesion to it. Uh, what I want to do is I want to have this uh, chest burst to stay upright. So we're going to use the tail as the base. He's going to sit like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now finally start to bend. I have a um, heavy gauge armature wire in there. I'm going to start bending it. There we go. Get a nice bend on that. This looks great. It's really coming together. Uh, the tail, again, there's no armature wire in here. I didn't go that far back. But now realizing this is foam, so what I can probably do is get my... Let me get a board. Hold on. Still hot. Bend it like so. Got a little bit of that rattlesnake vibe to it, but not bad. Okay. Our next step is we're going to seal this. Now I got it bent and positioned the way I like to. We're going to seal this, and I have some creature cast. This is um, rubber. This is super flex, super flex, uh, super flex creature cast, and it's water thin. Stuff's great, so I'm going to use that to seal all this. Um, but I've discovered before I do that, um, I'd like this stuff to stick a little bit better. Um, I've never used. Let me see. I wonder if I want to put some uh, some barge cement on that first to help with the adhesion. So let's do that real quick. Superflex uh, creature cast they gave me. It's water thin, which is great for what I want to do. But uh, I realized this might be the great opportunity to add some pigment to it. So let me pour some of it back in the jug um, and add a little bit of acrylic paint to the cup. I got my brush here. Let me just do a little dab of white here. And I want to add the white to the latex because I'm going to coat this tail. And I thought I, eventually I'm going to paint it, but I see if we can add the uh, acrylic white to the rubber itself. Because the uh, end result is I'm going to paint this uh, a flesh tone. And this is white and this is black. So you definitely going to have to make this match. It's a lot easier to paint flesh tone on a white base than it is a black base. So even though I coat this tail with the rubber, I'm probably going to still have to go back in with some white paint and paint on top of that. Yeah, this stuff is great. It's really water thin. That's actually kind of a plus because you don't want to lose this detail. And there's a lot of detail on this, the texture and everything. Sometimes it gets covered up with something that's a little bit thicker. And this is not. Creature cast is one of the great things. That's why I love using it when I make props. Because most of the props you do, like guns and knives and things, have detail on them. When you start coating stuff on it, you kind of bury that little fine detail on them. But with creature cast, it's so thin. All right, the tail is completely dry. And also what I like about it, it's got a bit of tack to it. So it really helped the paint stick to this part. But for the plastic part, I'm going to use some Bulldog adhesion from what I always find is great before you put any paint on top of plastic, especially vinyl plastic. It helps really make the paint stick well. So we're gonna do that. So we're gonna spray it with this, let that dry, and then we're going to fire up the airbrush. And we're gonna put on the flesh color, this is like a matte flesh color. And once that's done, let that dry, I'm gonna hit it again with the Rust-Oleum 2X Clear. I'm gonna put clear coat on that. So that's what we're gonna do in the spray booth. So you guys ready? Let's go over to the spray booth. All right, there is the clear coat is dry. 
this guy look look at all this detail it's gonna pop once I put some uh, <laughs> some uh, paint on this today so again the clear coats great because it's gonna be really resilient because I'm using acrylic paint today it's red acrylic I'm gonna water it down enough to where it'll get in the cracks and crevices but I'm just gonna be able just to wipe off the excess and since it's got a clear coat it won't stick to the uh, acrylic because I got a protective uh, thick clear coat on it um, I'm going to be using the red today. This is uh, Nova. Now, again, you don't have to use Nova. Just I just can use just a good standard uh, banner red color. But this is the red they have, and this is pretty decent. Pretty dark, and I like their pigment. It's really dark in the red. So, oh, that's the red I want. Do a little wiping. Oh, look at that. <laughs> ah, mm. This looks awesome. Now that the uh, acrylic paint is dried, it's stuck uh, a lot of sparks where it made things a little bit um, too much red in some areas. So the tricky thing is I'm going to take some uh, denatured alcohol. Now the thing is, this will move the red paint and leave and not disturb the paint underneath so much because it's got the clear coat, but you have to be careful because it will, if you push too hard, it'll remove too much. That's the ticket. There we go. That's what I wanted right there. Now again, this alcohol trick only works if the base coat underneath it is enamel. All right, I have some Tamiya blue, but this is Tamiya clear, which I think is going to be perfect. And I have some uh, chrome, but we're going to do that Seconds. Let's get some uh, alcohol. Now for the teeth. I'm going to paint these guys chrome. Let's give it a look over. There's the teeth. They look great. There's all that detail in the wash. Back of the tail. Well, looks good. This side, you can see all the detail on that. Ah, I dub this. <laughs> I dub the done. My alien chest burster. <laughs> there is uh, my chest burster vinyl kit again everybody if you want to know where to get one of these I have links for these below the video everything I used in this video is listed below the video as well if it's your first time watching don't forget to click and subscribe and while you're at it go to my website eviltedsmith.com and get on my mailing list check out all the patterns I have for cosplay if you guys are into building stuff I have numerous foam patterns to build, making some props, weapons and things from aliens, all kinds of good stuff. If you want to do some shopping, click through my Amazon link. But every little bit of shopping you do helps me keep making videos. This particular video is done from my live stream, Evil Ted Live. I do on twitch.tv slash Evil Ted Smith every other Monday and Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you back next time right here on Evil Ted Live. Thank <laughs> you.